Let them hear you roar. The full moon in Leo on Thursday, January 25th heralds time to honor your talents, celebrate your accomplishments, and get the attention you deserve. Just make sure you don't go too far in the other direction, act self-righteous, and forget to share the spotlight with people in your life, since this full moon also squares Jupiter. I'm here to tell you more and to break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you like my work, please support me by leaving a like or a comment, subscribing, and pressing the notification bell. All of that is very encouraging for me and also encouraging for YouTube. Helps my channel grow. You can also say thank you by buying me a coffee. I really appreciate that as well. Before we dive in, a couple of announcements. There's only a few days left to take advantage of my year ahead sale and get your 2024 reading, you can save $20 off the in-person consultation by using the code 20 letters to four numbers, or you can save $40 by getting a recorded reading. The discount is already built into that recording, and that one can be found in the shop section of my website. Both readings include the recorded um, prediction as well as the PDF file that describes and breaks down the most important dates for you specifically. In the shop section of my website, you can also find some of my products. For example, my 2024 planner. It is currently discounted. You can see the information down below. 225 pages filled with major insights about astrology to come, transits, lunar guides, new and full moons, journaling prompts, and so much more. I created this to help myself and I think it could be a great tool for you. The year has just started. It's not too late to order yours. And since we're talking about the full moon in Leo, I'd like to highlight my Sunlight in a Jar 2 candle. This one was created in the summer of 2023 and it takes advantage of the powerful sun in Leo, putting it prominently in the chart, highlighting confidence, star quality, recognition, you know, inspiration that is so tied to Leo. It smells like citrus and it has gold foil in it to help connect the candle with the energy of the planet. So this could be perfect for anyone born with their sun in Libra or the sun in Aquarius, which are two signs that that quality, that star power is harder to access because they're so socially minded. Additionally, if your natal sun is placed in the 12th, 8th, or 6th houses, so that's also sort of, you get stuck grinding away and dealing with spiritual questions in the 12th house, financial matters in the 8th, and just like daily work in the 6th. Or if your sun is making any difficult aspects to Chiron, to Saturn, or to Pluto you could definitely take advantage of using this candle. So let's talk about the full moon. The full moon occurs on Thursday, January 25th at 12.53 p.m. Eastern at 5 degrees 14 minutes Leon. So as always, it will most strongly affect people with placements between about 2 to 8 degrees fixed signs, which is Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, and Scorpio. It will affect us all based on which house it highlights, but it's potentially going to be especially strongly felt by people with those placements. Full moon is an opposition between the sun and the moon. So in a way, there's always tension between the conscious, goal-driven nature of the sun and the emotional need of the moon. And the full moons are encouraging us to honor our feelings, to not shy away from the feelings, right? Like full moon in Leo always occurs during Aquarius season. Aquarius is so cerebral, so society oriented. We just had Pluto move into Aquarius. There's a lot of focus right now on, you know, the community, the progress, the intellect, and the full moon in Leo is in the sign of the heart. It's in the sign of the feelings. It's in the sign of like, well, but I need attention too. You know, I need to water myself in order to help the garden grow. Um, so, very much like tension between the head and the heart, tension between um, kind of rational and creative, 
tension between the community and the self. And like I said, the invitation here is to tap into your heart, to let yourself feel the feelings, to ask for the attention, ask for what you need, because you cannot help others unless you help yourself, right? We have all heard on the plane, they say, don't put them, like, put the mask on yourself first so that you can help a child. So this is very much like, how can you celebrate yourself? How can you acknowledge yourself before you dive into all of these, like, other global projects, right? Full moon represents completion of the lunar cycle, not necessarily like completion, but like blossoming, right? We have planted the seeds around the new moon, which happened on August 16th, 2023. And now we are harvesting the good results, right? So take a look back. What have you learned? What kind of projects have you been working on in August? What are you celebrating right now, right? Like where have you created, played, dated, <laughs> um, inspired someone or started something? Like I said, a couple of big aspects that are present during this full moon is the opposition to Pluto. Um, the full moon is, at, moon is at five degrees. Pluto has just recently ingressed into Aquarius on the 20th of January. So Pluto is at zero degrees still, but they're five degrees apart. And like I said, Pluto suggests like new beginnings, new focus in our life. It suggests more communal, like scientific, intellectual attitudes and shifts in the community that we belong to. And so there might be an element of like frustration and tension as you also try to get appreciation and get sort of your personal needs fulfilled. And there's a square to Jupiter. Jupiter has just recently stationed direct on the 30th of December. So there is like a lot of momentum happening, a lot of, you know, focus on stability and resources and building and achieving. And I just feel like like this this full moon to me is just really like making sure that you haven't forgotten your heart, you haven't forgotten play, you haven't forgotten to celebrate yourself. Like this is such an invitation to be like, you know, I know that it's about more than just me, but in order to <laughs> to be happy, I need to make sure that I'm also taking care of me. So honor your body, honor your heart, be a little bit selfish. Don't be a lot selfish. Make sure that you're not just like getting lost and fulfilling yourself. Because like I said, square to Jupiter could suggest a bit of an overindulging, a bit of like self-righteousness excitement, right? Forward momentum, new directions, new interests, new beginnings. We also have a T-square in this case. T-square is when three signs of a certain modality represent it. So we're talking about the fixed sign of Leo. We have the Sun and Pluto in Aquarius, and we have Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. So the parts that miss, the part that is missing is Scorpio. And Scorpio is very deeply feeling sign. Scorpio is not afraid of death and rebirth. Scorpio is not afraid of, you know, intensity. So I invite you to not be afraid of intensity, but make sure you're finding a good balance between your heart and your head. So let's take a closer look at the 12 signs and brainstorm together what this could be bringing about for you. Like I said, remember that we did have a new moon in August. What's interesting too, before we break it down for the signs, what's interesting is the new moon we had in August was dead in the center of the retrograde, while Venus was retrograde in Leo. So this to me is bringing attention to that. It's bringing attention to the summer, late summer of August, early September, and questions you have been facing, questions of recognition, questions of appreciation, right? So it's almost like if you have planted good seeds, if you have initiated good practices in your relationships in order to feel more appreciated, if you have started working on new projects, this could be like a great opportunity to pat yourself on the back and um, acknowledge that. But if you feel like 
something you have been thinking about and working on in mid-August, if you feel like it hasn't led to what you want and you're still craving more in relationships and your self-expression, this is really the time to figure out what that new path might be for you. Okay, so let's talk about zodiac signs. If you are in Aries rising, there's a full moon in your fifth house. It opposes Pluto in the 11th. It squares Jupiter in the second. So take a look back at August 16th when we had a new moon in Leo in your fifth house. Have you looked at pleasure? Have you started wondering what true joy is like? What makes you happy, right? Pluto has just ingressed into your 11th house. You are starting a new chapter in your friendships. You're exploring different dreams. You're maybe taking on a role of a healer, some like sh shaman in the community. Um, there's a lot of focus on who you want to be, how you want to be seen. Jupiter is in the second house, bringing attention to your resources, the best way to use them. Maybe there's like financial questions you're also addressing at the same time. And the full moon really says that you are encouraged to not forget what makes you happy. So as you like sort of, you know, as you take these new projects, just like take the moment to get in touch with your inner child, connect with your children, right? Like sort of remember what play is, what joy is, and perhaps dedicate some time to that, like nurture your heart with creative projects, right? This, this full moon can definitely bring more attention to your... Um, to your sector of fun, I think, as you ask all these big questions, like the full moon calls attention to have fun with your kids, have fun doing something enjoyable, date someone, you know, go on a fun date, sort of celebrate that side of yourself before you fully dive into, <laughs> into changing the world, right? Um, you can experience transformations in your romantic projects. You can tr experience transformations in your relationships with children in the sector of pleasure, creativity, and fulfillment as your desires transform also. And as you maybe get different resources, right? With Jupiter being in your second house going direct, Uranus is about to go direct. There's potentially new money coming in, also like shifting shifting values are happening so as you're going through this like shift and receiving new abundance new resources you're also very much like encouraged to open up space and to reconnect with true joy and true pleasure and in the process the full moon can also suggest like letting go of something letting go of the old projects letting go of a relationship that is maybe outdated, letting go of bad habits that do not serve you, anything that is like stopping you from being the most sparkly version of yourself. Let me know how this resonates and let me know what you remember happening in mid-August. If you are a Taurus rising, there's a full moon in your fourth house of home, family, and living situation. It opposes Pluto in the 10th, squares Jupiter in the first. So this is interesting, right? Like the sun and Pluto are in your 10th house and you are focusing on your public life. There is maybe new hunger for professional achievement. Maybe your ambition is getting fed and there is new interests that you're exploring. Jupiter is in the first, so you are reinventing yourself. You are renovating yourself. <laughs> you're like under construction new body, new role in the world, new projects, new goals. And the full moon in the fourth says, well, do you have a happy home? Do you, are you willing to let go of things in the home in order to achieve that professional success, right? Like what needs to be created in the home in order to then have that sort of new beginning professionally. So you're very much balancing your professional goals with your home, family, living situation. You're maybe changing your living situation based on the transformations you're going through, right? Like if you're um, becoming a parent, for example, the full moon in the fourth could be the invitation to rethink your home, to get it more children friendly. 
um, to create some kind of space. There might also be, I think, like you may also be looking at your home and asking how can you make it more enjoyable and more sort of happy as you are venturing on these new, um, starting like new beginnings in your life, right? There might be transformations around being a parent. There might be changes to your family dynamic. But all of it, I think it's like very much like don't get too caught up with what's coming up, right? Like don't start like overthinking it and get too like excited too much in your head about how things would be. Like try to be present, be grounded, be playful, connect with like family and people you love and just sort of appreciate how far you've come, celebrate yourself and what you've done, right? Or what you even can do in the future. Just like make sure that you have a happy place to call home before you go out there and conquer the world. <laughs> Please let me know how this resonates and what was new moon like in Leo in mid-August when we had Venus retrograde. Have you set any intentions? Have you started working on something? I'd love to know. If you are a Gemini rising, there is a full moon in your third house opposite Pluto in the ninth square, Jupiter in the twelfth. So take a look back at mid-August to see what was happening in your life in terms of your schedule, in terms of your siblings, everyday life, your knowledge, um, and your community, right? So the Pluto, Pluto has just ingressed in your ninth house, which is suggestive of transformation in your life in regards to education, maybe becoming a teacher, becoming a more influential person. Um, there could be changes connected to travel, perhaps you're moving, perhaps you are um, becoming a citizen in a different country, some kind of legal matter culminating. And as you are setting your set, setting your sights on something bigger or even setting your sails on something bigger, right? With Pluto in the ninth house, as you're sort of figuring out how you want to impact the world and influence the world, the full moon in the third is asking you like, well, but have you um, taken care of your immediate environment, right? Like it's sort of saying like, what do you need to change? What do you need to adjust? How do you need to make sort of improvements to your everyday life? There could be, maybe you need to check your car before you move to this new place, or you need to take some exams, or you need to write out an outline of your plan, right? Maybe you need to take some exams and upgrade your skills, but even more so like take a moment to celebrate how far you've come. You know, I'm sort of a big fan with this full moon. I think it's about like appreciate everything you've accomplished. Look at your immediate environment, appreciate everything you've already set up for yourself that is encouraging this bigger success. The square to Jupiter in the 12th house could be suggestive once again of some kind of spiritual work, of healing work, imaginative work, even relocation, I think, reads very strongly to me, like escape, transformation of your uh, beliefs of yourself in the world, like starting to be more influential, be more healing, moving somewhere else. And like the full moon in the third is really saying that in order to get you where you're trying to go, in order to get you like, um, the visa you want or get you the subscribers you seek or the publishing deal. Take a moment to sit with yourself, look at everything you already have, appreciate all the gifts that you have, acknowledge, you know, everything that like you've done to be able even to dream of the things you're dreaming about, right? To be able to share your knowledge, like every sort of little step you took and see if there's other improvements that you still need to make. And please let me know how this resonates in the comments below. Now, if you are a Cancer rising, full moon, full moon in Leo activates your second house of money and value. So it opposes Pluto in the eighth and it squares Jupiter in the 11th. And so here you're looking at your immediate finances, at your resources, at the debts you have to pay, at the values you have and sort of personal goals, personal interests, personal, bank account of all the achievements, all the desires, all the things that are close to heart as you take a stab at a different career, maybe at a new dream, right? Jupiter just went direct in your 11th house. Are you taking action when it comes to reaching these new goals, new heights, 
um, exploring new opportunities, connecting with new people, building yourself yourself a following or building yourself a different role in the world, right? Like Pluto in the eighth house will encourage you to die and be reborn. It's literally eighth house is the house of death. So not literal death. A lot of times it's just like transforming something, letting go of something. It will encourage you to build better relationships. It will encourage you to free yourself from outdated agreements to pay off debts. So I think this full moon is very much a moment to recognize what you truly desire to get sort of connected to it. Take a look back, like I said, at mid mid August to see have you started valuing something else? Have you started saving for something? Have you maybe gotten in debt and now you're cleaning that out? You're letting that go. You're also, I think, not shying away from being honest about like, this is what's truly important to me. This is what I want and this is how things should be. And maybe that requires some financial readjustment, but even more so like more honesty, more truth, more connection with what is important to you because second house is also a place of self-esteem and how can you value yourself if you're not being honest with yourself right and people in your life let me know how this resonates now if you are a leo rising the star of this full moon of course it's happening in your first house right it's opposing pluto in the seventh it's also squaring jupiter in the tenth so all of the big houses are getting activated for you except for the fourth but it's it's a big deal First of all, I'd like you to look back and let me know what happened in your life at that time in the comments below. Take a look back at August 16th, 2023. We were dead in the middle of Venus retrograde in your first house, maybe sort of questions about who you are, questions about what you look like, questions about your message in the world and what makes you feel like the best version of yourself, the most appreciated, the most successful, the most bright and colorful version of yourself. And we had a new moon in Leo. So out of this uncertainty, out of this rediscovery of self came a new moon where you perhaps started working on something. And so this full moon is an invitation to celebrate your accomplishments. It's an invitation to complete and tie any loose ends when it comes to your health, when it comes to your wellness, when it comes to your diet, exercise, anything like that. Um, change your look, right? Complete complete what you're trying to do. The opposition to Pluto in the seventh is interesting because Pluto in the seventh raises the volume on relationships, right? And sort of brings a lot of attention to partnerships and relationships and new beginnings. And the full moon is saying, well, before you dive into all of that, what do you still need? What do you need to communicate about? What do you need to change in yourself, right? Maybe you need to see a therapist. Maybe you need to be more clear about what you seek in your romantic life. Maybe you need to be more clear about your professional goals. You're getting some sirens to confirm that. <laughs> um, in New York, you get sirens all the time, but you Leos get extra sirens. So the square to Jupiter in the 10th, I think is also very much like, well, there's all these maybe motions and opportunities happening in the house of career, but is that what you truly desire? Are you truly happy with it? Like take a moment to sit with yourself, to acknowledge yourself, to honor yourself and to think of like, what do you need? What do you want? What do you desire? And how does your career satisfy it? How does your relationship satisfy it? And whether it doesn't, what can you do to change yourself in order to get you there, right? But not just change yourself to get you there, but like, be honest with yourself so that you get to the right place versus just some kind of societal idea of the perfect job. Let me know how this resonates. Now, if you are a Virgo rising, there's a full moon in your 12th house in opposition to Pluto in the 6th, squaring Jupiter in the 9th. Interesting stuff. <laughs> so Pluto just entered your 6th house and there will slowly be a big transformation in your area of work and your sector of health and your place of problem solving, even in your relationship to pets, right? Um, it makes things more intense. It creates a sense of like needing to transform something in terms of how you take care of yourself, how you handle work, how much work do you do, right? The square to Jupiter suggests 
that there's opportunities to study, travel, teach, write. So I wonder if, you know, if you're sort of looking at becoming a healer, becoming an influencer in the healing field, becoming a nutritionist, some, some kind of goals connected to like health, healing, law, being a doctor, etc. And the full moon in the 12th is very much an invitation to um, retreat, to take a step back before you make important moves, to maybe look at your inner desires because 12th house is the blind spot look at like things that you're not acknowledging look at your bad habits and let some go um let them go allow yourself to step away know that the answers will come know that the questions will wait that you don't have to rush into anything and tend to your need for peace right like go meditate during this full moon um write in your journal take a nap, <laughs> dress up and, I don't know, buy yourself like something fun. Um, do not rush the answers, definitely. And perhaps like also think of like, what do you need to clean out in your physical space and in your mental space before, you know, you can embrace the new role of like a healer, influencer, writer, whatever it might be. And let me know how this resonates. Next, we turn to Libra rising. So if you are a Libra rising, there's a full moon in your 11th house in opposition to Pluto in the 5th, squaring Jupiter in the 8th. And here, to me, you're looking at your relationship to your friendships, at your relationship to social media, at your dreams, and you're asking which ones of them are true and which ones of them authentic and sort of exciting and which ones potentially need to be released right take a look back at mid-august 2023 when we had the new moon in leo in your 11th house we also had venus retrograding in your 11th house have you dealt with any friendship faux pas have you dealt with some kind of social media burnout have you been questioning what do you truly want to do right because the full moon will invite you to let go of anything that doesn't serve you the friendships that don't serve you the connections that are not healthy the social obligations things on your schedule that are maybe draining right could also be the opportunity to celebrate your friendships and to appreciate the people who stood by your side and have sort of a good time with them and be a little bit playful and creative and maybe dress up or go shopping. Pluto entering your fifth house is a big shift. You're starting a 20 year long cycle of reinvention of pleasure in more intensity, more authenticity, choosing pursuits and connections that are truthful, experiencing death and rebirth in terms of letting go of old habits, letting go of people-pleasing tendencies, letting go of relationships that are not healthy, embracing parenthood, embracing love and sexual exploration. The Jupiter in the eighth house is also suggesting of a shift around resources, around how you relate with other people, how much you trust other people. So I think as you ponder these big questions, as you look at like pleasure and children and romance and resources, you're maybe even looking at what's worth your time, what's worth investing things. And I think something around, something about your dreams is very much changing. Maybe you used to believe that you need to do everything on your own and now you're being more open to having a business partner or you know, yeah, like some kind of changes around be being a parent or changes around um, investing into things like being sort of supported, letting in more support, anything like that is a possibility. But I think to me, this, this also feels like a need to maybe sort through your connections to be like which ones of them are meant to stay versus which ones maybe are not. So dramatic. <laughs> let me know how this resonates and let me know if anything was happening in mid-August when we had the new moon in Leo. 
For lovely Scorpio risings, this is quite big. There's a full moon in your 10th house, the sector of career, status, reputation. It opposes Pluto in the 4th and it squares Jupiter in the 7th. So take a look back at mid-August. We had a new moon in Leo, new beginnings in the same sector in August. And now the new beginnings are coming full circle, bringing fruit, changing your professional life, transforming, right? Looking at Pluto in the fourth and Jupiter in the seventh, something is changing around your home, family, living situation, your relationships. With Pluto in the fourth, you may be moving, you may be kind of going through a change in the family dynamic with you know Jupiter in the seventh your relationship is growing and expanding there may be business opportunities there may be more forward momentum very sort of like you know Jupiter in the seventh can definitely be pregnancy um can bring like business start Pluto in the fourth sense of separation on some level death and rebirth in the home you are becoming more empowered, you're going, you know, you're maybe letting go of the past. And the full moon in the 10th is suggestive of all of these changes affecting your career, affecting your public life, affecting the way the world sees you, right? On some level, I invite you to celebrate your professional accomplishments. There could actually be reasons for celebration. Full moon could bring recognition, a pay raise, uh, business success some kind of professional triumph of sorts, right? But on the other hand, um, I feel like maybe the things that you're going through are inviting a change professionally. And maybe that change is tied to August last year when you started to feel an element of dissatisfaction, maybe a lack of appreciation. And so you're making transformation, you're transitioning professionally. And if you do still feel a lack of appreciation and you're still sort of in the middle of the professional change, take a moment to appreciate yourself, right? Be there for yourself. Be there in terms of acknowledging yourself and giving yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> but like just, just sort of try to be your own source of light and fire instead of expecting other people to do that for you. And it's great if you're getting some kind of big change professionally, like you're finally getting the job you've been looking for for a long time, but you can never go wrong by putting stock and trusting yourself, right? So say a prayer for yourself for sticking through the difficult times. Let me know how this resonates down below. If you are a Sagittarius rising, there's a full moon in your ninth house that opposes Pluto in the third, squares Jupiter in the sixth. Full moon is always a completion, culmination of something that got started at the new moon. So take a look back at mid-August. What was happening in your sector of education, travel, writing, legal matters, publishing? Were you planning trips? Were you thinking of changing your life? Were you sort of revisiting some kind of religious practices? Um, were you asking big questions? The full moon in the ninth can bring change to those areas, like completing a course of study, taking the trip you've been planning to go on, experiencing an ideological shift. There's also a square to Jupiter in the sixth house. Sixth house represents health, represents work, service to others. So I wonder if the shift you're going through is connected to those topics and maybe the things that you've been working on really hard, things that you've been sort of bleeding over for a while. Pluto just went into your third house. Pluto in the third is a sign of like your everyday life transforming, your communication transforming, new interests coming into your life, new um, connections, you know, new relationships with siblings maybe. Something I think like like you start to crave a lot more depth, a lot more intensity. And the full moon in the ninth is maybe asking you to tap into your spiritual side to, you know, kind of learn something new, maybe to have a philosophical sort of perspective on things, to meditate, to pray, to do anything that is like supportive of the changes that you're experiencing. Even even like with Jupiter being in the sixth house, I think it's like, how are you supporting yourself through the difficult times? Do you have some kind of belief practice, right? Like, do you have some kind of um, ritual, community um, resource of support that is like bigger than 
that is like outside of work and you can find like around this time it could literally be the time you're like celebrating by going on a trip you know like celebrating your <laughs> your hard work over the course of the last six months maybe by like throwing a graduation party or like going on a trip or like like there might also be culminations when it comes to legal matters like getting a visa you've been waiting for or finishing some kind of like court case you've been involved in can also complete um but it feels like it definitely feels like very spiritual to me too with with the full moon in the ninth house like and perhaps an invitation to like appreciate yourself and celebrate all the times you trusted yourself and like you know how far you've you've come let me know how this resonates ninth house is a bit of a like spiritual place so i think sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly whether it will be like more spiritual awakening or a literal change i'd love to know how what's happening in your life if you are a Capricorn rising, there's a full moon in your 8th house in opposition to Pluto in the 2nd square, Jupiter in the 5th. So this is interesting. Pluto has just gone into your 2nd house, and 2nd house is the place of money values. Pluto in the 2nd can encourage you to look at your mentality around money. It could encourage you to transform your career, to sort of go through a death and rebirth professionally. Um, Jupiter is in the fifth house, which is also encouraging you to connect with your interests, to connect with your passions, whatever brings you pleasure. It could be also encouraging parenthood, encouraging love, bringing more love into your life. And so the full moon in the eighth house is suggestive of you needing to clear up some karmic contracts some kind of separate from something that's outdated. Maybe that means an old job. Maybe that means a debt. Maybe that means uh, even like an old philosophy or a fear to become a parent, to become successful, to experience that financial transformation. Um, your partner's resources can be changing. Your dynamics in your relationship can be changing to a point that maybe you are either becoming the person who's making more or you're trusting your partner to sort of help you as you're becoming a parent, right? Or as you are starting some kind of creative adventure. Lots of kind of tension, I think, around like trust and around money. And money sometimes means trust, right? Like if we let somebody else pay for us, that means we trust them. <laughs> if we choose to be like i'm gonna pay for myself don't worry about it then maybe there's a trust issue there so deep transformations i think both psychologically like releasing old habits around money and also literally as in like paying off debts and clearing some connections kind of ending some contracts and maybe opening space for new beginnings um is likely and as far as things to celebrate you know like celebrate how generous you are celebrate how um persevering you are right with capricorn on the ascendant how kind of unstoppable you are pluto has been in your first house since 2008 and you've made it through and you have now come out with this new hunger for success and abundance and sort of financial growth so that's exciting let me know how this resonates and let me know what was happening in terms of resources, finances, trust in August when we had the new moon in Leo. Now, if you are in Aquarius rising, there's a full moon in your seventh house in opposition to Pluto in the first square, Jupiter in the fourth. So that is interesting, right? Here we're looking at your relationships, your partnerships and your contractual agreements your sort of connections to other people and celebrating something, moving a relationship to the next level, um, or letting something go if the relationship doesn't feel fulfilling. This is, of course, a culmination of the new moon we had in mid-August, the new moon that coincided with Venus retrograde. If you are in Aquarius rising, what was that like for you? Did you deal with any, did you face any relationship tensions? Have you deal with some kind of challenges? Have you transformed through them? Pluto is in your first house, right? It just entered. It's going to stay for 20 years. 
and you are growing, you are facing inner shadows, you are transforming yourself, you're addressing sort of, you know, power dynamics. So Pluto here could be very much like an invitation to examine power, to find ways to share power, to have better agreements in relationships. This full moon can be quite exciting, I think, because it could make you realize that you actually want to commit to a relationship and, you know, decide to start getting pregnant or, you know, get married or even like start a business. Um, or it could be an invitation to part ways if you are, and you're likely you already feel which one is it because you probably know which direction your relationship is going to take. The square to Jupiter in the fourth can also be suggestive that there's like a lot going on in terms of home, family, and living situation. Maybe you're buying a home, maybe you're renovating, and I think that could be suggestive of the change in the relationship that's happening too. So change that involves moving in together, getting a mortgage together, getting pregnant, starting a family, having their family move in with you, moving into a different country together, all of those are possible. And please let me know how this resonates. Now, if you are a Pisces rising, there's a full moon in your sixth house in opposition to Pluto in the 12th, squaring Jupiter in the third. So the full moon in the sixth is looking at your house of health, work, and service, and you are completing a chapter here. Take a look back at mid-August 2023. We had a new moon in your sector of health, work, and service. At the same time as we also had Venus retrograde in your sector of health, work, and service. So Venus retrograde would have invited you, and new moon as well, would have invited you to come up with better practices when it comes to your work, to maybe choose work that makes you feel more accomplished, more successful, more rewarded and recognized, to change your health, to change your um, diet, exercise, to start taking better care of yourself. And around the time of this full moon, you might be celebrating the good results of that. If you have been doing good things, right? If you have been sticking to the plan and sort of working at getting better sleep or being like exercising more, this could be the time you start to feel strong, you start to feel accomplished, you start to feel recognized professionally too. It could be the time because there is that opposition to Pluto when you, when your self-defeating habits catch up with you and you need to really sort of get serious and you need to, you know, commit to things. This, the full moon would be a good time. The square root to Jupiter in the third is suggestive of your mindset changing, of your, you know, there's maybe a lot going on that is sort of overwhelming because third house is your everyday life. Jupiter blows things up. So there's more meeting, there's more phone calls, there is like busyness. And I think the full moon in the sixth in the sign of Leo is like inviting you to cut through all the crap and to commit to taking care of you, to be present with yourself, with your health, with your body, and know that your mental health and your dreams are very much connected to your physical health and your ability to take care of yourself. So there is an invitation to look within and to make changes to your everyday life, to your health, to your wellness and well-being that let you then take your knowledge and take yourself to the outside world and accomplish the goals that you potentially have. And this is all I have. Thank you for being here as always. I love you guys. <laughs> what is that? Valley girl. I love you guys. Um, but I really appreciate you being here and watching my videos. And I hope you have the most beautiful full moon in Leo. Take a moment to raise a glass of water or <laughs> something else for yourself and honor how far you've come. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.